Divorce Lawyers of Reddit, what's the most outrageous reason someone filed for divorce? Was a loud chore at the dinner table. He developed a complex literally needed out as he couldn't bear to eat with her. Edit, this has gone ganbusters. Thanks guys. This sounds like a Seinfeld B plot. She's an audible masticator, George. I can't handle it. I've been taking her for soft food, soup, noodles. Once I told her this breakfast place had the best oatmeal in town just so she wouldn't order the French toast. This is more of an Elaine subplot. Finds the perfect guy, but he's a noisy chewer. And then, yada yada yada. But, you yada 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 at over the best part. No, I mentioned the bisque. Taught the parakeet certain cuss words for his wife. Ha ha ha. The parrot lives with the man now. I thought about going towards family long, and then I realized I'm gonna have to deal with things such as who's gonna get the parrot and grandma as vase. Nope. Now you see that technically falls under bird law. I worked for a law office where the owner would talk about the man who sued for divorce because his wife would no longer allow him to use a loaded gun as a marital aid. She had apparently agreed to it at some point and was fine with the gun as long as it was empty, but that just wasn't good enough for him. ETA, since some folks need it spelled out, by marital aid, I mean a dildo. He wanted to stick a loaded gun in her vagina as part of their sex routine. She was down for it as long as the gun was empty, but that wasn't good enough, and he thought this was reasonable grounds for divorce. Also, I wasn't trying to be pretentious by saying marital aid. I just really didn't want to have to type out that he wanted to use a loaded gun as a dildo, but I guess nobody's leaving this thread happy today. My client was the outrageous one, so my heart went out to his poor wife. He had OCD which manifested primarily financially, so he made their lives a penny-pinching hell. Examples, he was obsessed with avoiding unnecessary driving, wear and tear on the car, gas expenses. So he cut the whole family's hair at home and never let them eat at a restaurant or go to the movies. Weirdest of all, he kept one toilet paper roll on him at all times and you had to get one square from him before you could go to the bathroom. He never gave more than one square. Why finally got fed up and left him when one, he gave her bangs during an in-home haircut and two, their daughter was so traumatized by the toilet paper thing they couldn't potty train her. Also, he hated paying his divorce lawyer bill. He was also an old-fashioned mega-Catholic who considered divorce a deadly sin. He viewed my whole job as an unnecessary and sinful expense. My dad was a divorce lawyer. He had a client who wanted to divorce her husband for two reasons. One, he did not have enough hair on his chest. Point two, he did not drive fast enough. Keep in mind this was in the 70s when just hair was a bit more important. Shit yeah. It would have been embarrassing to show up late at a pool party and your man not having a decent chest bush. A luscious mane of hair from my chest pubes down to my ball fro. Wasn't the reason but did happen during the course of the divorce. Neither side would follow the court orders. When they had to go back to court they were fighting over a pistol in the man's grandmother's bowls. I assumed for weeks that these bowls were some sort of heirloom or expensive china. When they finally brought the bowls in to swap they were ducking Tupperware. I dropped into court to visit a family friend who was a judge and had quite a treat. A wealthy area farmer and his wife were in court that day fighting about possessions assets. The judge had had enough? After briefly reviewing the history of their case he offered the couple one last opportunity to retire to a conference room and come to an agreement. Both refused. Their lawyers were clearly as weary as the judge. The judge then asks each party which room in their house was their favorite room. She picked the kitchen and he picked his gun room. 
The judge then informed them that because the matter had dragged on for so long with both behaving like children he was going to decide the matter of the property. She was awarded everything in the kitchen and he the gun room. Everything else was to be sold at auction with the profits equally divided. Then the judge told them, now neither of you is happy right. They clearly were not ha ha. Honestly thought the judge was gonna give the wife the gun room and the husband the kitchen. I thought he was going to pull a King Solomon and give half of their favorite rooms to the other spouse. Colleague handled a case where money was not an issue but the kids were. Neither parent wanted them. My mom worked in abuse and neglect counseling and juvenile justice. There are a lot more cases like this than I care to admit. Parents divorce and neither side wants the kid. Some of them are that neither side wants a kid but will fight over another kid. If ends up totally screwing them over because they have to live with the fact that their parents didn't want them. What ends up happening to the unwanted kid? In these cases the kid was removed from the home. My mom worked at a residential facility. But when they tried integrating with the family again, even if the kid took the steps to improve relations, the family wanted nothing of it and the kid usually went back to residential or was sent to a different residential facility. She was kidnapped in Mexico and he refused to pay ransom. Eventually her family managed to pay and she was left on the side of the road. It is not outrageous as in petty but outrageous as how absurd that is. Added to answer all the questions, I don't know how much they wanted as ransom. But it was substantial as the conversation between her family and him was how he had it liquid and they had to liquidate investments to get that amount. She may have told me, she may not. Something in pesos and I didn't know the conversion rate, it was all a random number to me. This happened about seven years ago. He wasn't with her on the trip. She was traveling with cousins and went downstairs alone to get ice cream and wait for them to get ready. I do not know all the details. She was extremely distraught talking about it and it was not necessary to pry. It was clearly traumatic and even tough I had a million more questions I left it alone. Honey I love you, but we agreed to save up money so we can purchase a house. Your ransom would really set us back. I don't really think I can add a ransom line item to this month's budget. Everything is already super tight. Edit. I'm curious if you have a line item for Reddit Gold, because if not it seems like reckless spending. Edit 2. Reckless. How embarrassing. Edit 3. Thank God my top comment isn't about being a can girl anymore. Now honey, you know the family policy. We do not negotiate with terrorists. Paralegal here. Still remember an early case I worked on, man divorced his wife for her bingo addiction. 10 to 12 times per week she went to bingo. She was 82 he was 86. Hashtag X200D, but the all-time greatest. 220 somethings, they were irreconcilable because he kept smoking her weed stash when she wasn't home. To be fair, him smoking all her weed multiple times. Assumingly after some kind of a hey man don't smoke all my weed conversation, is a pretty valid reason to not be able to trust someone. Yeah, my mother-in-law and her husband were living in my house for a few months until they got their housing situation sorted out. After the couple of weeks or so I thought my weed stash was a little light, after about a month I realized there was no way I was going through it that fast. Then one day I left work early and found them in the garage taking rips from my gong. They aren't allowed to be alone in my house anymore. Like shit, I would have given you some weed if you had asked. They didn't even have the decency to replace the weed with something else. At least teenage me drank half my dad's vodka and replaced it with water. Had a high school party at my house one night when my parents were away. Only party I ever had. We ran out of booze late night so we drank a liter of Bacardi and filled it up with water after. My parents weren't big drinkers. 
The day they dropped me off at college they went up to Maine and about eight hours later I get a call. They had brought the Bacardi with them and were enjoying waters and coke courtesy of me and my dumb high school friends. Thank God the statute of limitations had expired on that one. If my kids ever do that to me I'm going to gift them that same bottle on their 21st birthday. My dad did that to my sister. It was pretty funny. I don't know why she stole his booze though. He shared if you asked nicely and you had a solid plan about what you were doing and where. A solid plan your sister probably did not have a solid plan. I had some friends get divorced because she legit hated Dale Earnhardt and he legit hated Jeff Gordon. Oh man this brings back childhood memories. Kind of related story that totally doesn't matter. Growing up my dad was big into NASCAR and loved Dale Earnhardt. Hated Jeff Gordon of course. I loved Dale too, but I also secretly loved Jeff and hit it. I must have been around 6-8-ish. One day while the race was on, I was so upset about betraying my dad or something by liking Jeff Gordon that my mom found me crying in my room. After I told her why I was upset, she went and got my dad and he sat and told me it was okay for me to like Jeff Gordon even if he doesn't, that I'm allowed to like whatever I want that makes me happy, and that nothing more would make him happier. Then he hugged me and told me to come watch the race and cheer him on. Later that week he got me a number 24 sticker to put on my mirror in my room. I don't know, I don't have very many good memories in my life but that is one of them. Edit, y'all, I'm a girl. So some of these jokes don't work lol. Your dad sounds like a good dude, at least in this story. Ha <laughs> ha I like this conditional statement. It's honestly perfect for Reddit. At least in this story should be the new closing of just about every judgment call here.